What is up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Aaron, this is Aaron's Aquatics. Today, we have a bacterial bloom to deal with. Before we get into that, I just want to say, this is actually the first video that I've created where I'm in front of the 250 gallon saltwater tank. It has been a long journey and by no means is this done, but man, I'm excited. But the reason we're here today is to deal with a road bump along this journey and that is a bacterial bloom. A bacterial bloom is very common in new aquariums. Sometimes this can happen because of excess nitrates and phosphates, usually due to overfeeding or some other byproduct that's sitting inside your tank that you may not know about. The best way to tell if you have a bacterial bloom is if your water is cloudy and if you're kind of developing a film on the surface of your tank. The reason behind the cloudy water is because the bacteria is growing so fast that literally the colony of the bacteria is almost visible to the naked eye. Now you can't see the individual particles, okay, come on, let's be real. But you can see the mass as a whole, and that mass is what can cause some of this cloudy water. And that is, well, has been my problem for the last week and a half. Now if you'd like to know more about autotrophic or heterotrophic bacteria, Nerd alert! I've left a link in the description below from an article that really goes into depth on the entire process of a bacteria bloom and some common fixes. What I want to talk about today is the situation that's going on with my tank, what I have done, done to try to remedy the situation and hopefully where we're going to be going from here. So let's go take a look. All right guys, before we get inside that bacteria bloom, I wanted to show you a few of the coral that I picked up. Actually the first two coral that I picked up when I got this tank completely set up. Now we will be doing coral spotlights, different species spotlights of each coral. Here's the first one of the two that I picked up. This is a hammer coral. I absolutely love this piece. Euphilia to me is probably one of the cooler parts of the hobby. Um, I'm really focused on SPS as well, so we're really gonna be looking into this shortly. The second coral I wanted to show you was actually not one that I picked up, it was my girlfriend that picked it up. That is Green Star Polyps or GSP. This stuff looks a lot like grass and you know what, I think that's the real big appeal to this. Um, you, you guys know my background, I'm really big into heavily planted tanks with uh, dwarf hair grass. Um, with uh, dwarf baby tears, and this stuff really kind of gives me that uh, that sense of home of the freshwater side. Um, but anyways, the reason why I have this isolated to this rock is that GSP can be really intrusive. It can be almost a uh, pest in some aquariums. So hopefully, it will only stay on this rock, nowhere else, and create a pretty sweet looking island. All right guys, like I said, we will be doing coral and species spotlights throughout the lifespan of this tank, which hopefully will be a very, very long time. But let's go ahead and get to the bacteria bloom. So it's really hard to see, at this angle at least, the bacteria bloom from this camera. The best way to look at this, to tell that the water is cloudy, is look at it from the side. Okay, check this out. Look how cloudy this water is. Now, this has actually been getting better. And I'm gonna tell you exactly what I did. Super, Aaron, super secret, master pro tip. Come on, the adhesive on this thing sucks. <laughs> um, is a master pro tip, you know, I'm basically a professional at this point on the uh, saltwater hobby. And I've only been in it for, you know, a couple months. You know, <laughs> dirt off the shoulder. So like I said, this issue has actually been going away for the last one or two days. And I really wanted to record this now while you can still see part of the bacteria bloom before it goes away. Just to talk a little bit about some of these issues that I've been going through. The secret, hold on, come here. The secret to get rid of a bacteria bloom, wait, it's time. That's right, I have done zero with this tank to start clearing up this bacteria bloom. Really guys, when it comes to new tank, this is basically a new tank syndrome almost. Uh, heterotrophic bacteria is very common when a new tank is set up when you start feeding it, right? A tank of this size can have some issues, right? I mean, you first you have to get used to how much your fish start feeding, right? If you're feeding your coral, how much do your coral eat? Right, so for me, I'm trying to dial that in. In that process, I have caused a bacteria bloom. Probably me, I wanna say it was me, I wanna take the blame. I'm not gonna blame anything else on it. 
Um, but hopefully we can kind of learn from this and move forward. Now originally, I didn't think that this was a bacterial bloom. I thought that this was a Kalkwasser overdose. That's right, I'm already dosing Kalkwasser. And for those of you that don't know, um, or that you're part of the freshwater hobby, it's basically fertilizer, almost, for coral, okay? Calcium-based organisms. Um, Kalkwasser includes a powder substance that includes calcium, and alkalinity, okay? Both of these are things that you have to manage, as well as magnesium, but you dose magnesium separately, okay? So, so these, are, these are really important. So, what happens is if you add too much calcwasser, what can happen is the calcium precipitates, okay? When it precipitates, it can leave some of the water cloudy. The reason why I know that this is not the case um, has to do with the fact that, one, my calcwasser dosing was very minimal, and two, the, uh, what happens if you overdose calcwasser is that uh, you get a rise in pH, actually a pretty significant rise in pH. So because of those reasons, I don't think that this is a calcwasser overdose. And for those of you that are curious, I mean, I, I normally, I, I wanna wait to do kind of a more in-depth discussion on the coral themselves, but I'll tell you how many pieces I have and the reason why I'm doing uh, calcwasser already. All right, I've got some acans right there. I have some trumpicol or candy cane coral, if you like to call them. Um, I have some GSP, I have some hammer coral. I've got this long tentacle plating coral, which for some reason, it got a rock stuck underneath it today. I'll have to get that out when I'm done. Um, we have, uh, let's go finish with the LS, uh, LPS. We've got a bubble coral. This thing is beautiful. Picked this up about uh, a week ago. And finally, we have SPS Mountain. We have two styloporas right there. Um, we have, and then the rest are Seriatopora or bird's nest coral. Um, and because these are SPS coral, um, they do use more alkalinity and calcium than any other coral inside this tank. So I've, I've been monitoring my levels. Definitely need to, to add calcwasser at this point. Now, what I said earlier about only being time was in part jest, right? There are methods to help reduce cloudiness or the bacteria bloom much faster. And it's really up to you if you wanna use it. So there's two major methods that I can think of. First, you can do major water changes over a period of time, like 30, 40, 50% water changes, um, if you have the water on hand. 50% water change for a 250 gallon tank is ridiculous, okay? Let me show you, let me show you exactly what's going on in here, okay? This is a bucket that my girlfriend allows inside my coat closet, okay? I'm very specific about that, she allows, okay? 44 gallons of water right there. Do you know how much a percentage this is? This is like 10, 10, 15%, okay? I'm not Asian, I can't do math. Uh, my girlfriend is, so she did the math for me. Now the other way to manage a bacterial bloom is by purchasing a UV sterilizer. UV sterilizers are both in fresh water and salt water. Um, what they do is they help make some protozoas and some bacteria uh, sterile. They mutate their genetics and they make them sterile so they can't reproduce. It doesn't really kill them outright, and it does, it's not instant, but it definitely helps. The problem with those, especially for a tank this size, is that you're looking at running $350 to $400 to fix a temporary problem. My best suggestion is time, guys. Just wait for something like this to go away. I'm happy. This is actually today, the first, is the first day that I've come home from work and finally seen some major improvement to this tank. So that's my suggestion, time. Just have patience. Patience in this hobby is great. Nothing good happens in both freshwater and the saltwater hobby if you do it quickly. Okay, before we go, I wanna do a quick fish update so you guys can see where everyone's at. You can see right there is Reverse Boy, the blue spotted jawfish. He's been doing absolutely fantastic inside this tank. Um, he's basically dug crevices everywhere underneath this rock. And I tell you, if you guys have seen my aquascaping video, go watch it, um, he has dug under this entire rock. So if this rock was sitting on the sand rather than the glass, like I said, you guys should do, um, he probably would have been crushed. Or if anything, my tank could have been cracked or the coral on top would have fallen off. So don't be, don't be stupid, be a smarty, just follow Aaron's you know, pro tips. The other fish that I wanted to quickly talk about are the clownfish. This is the Wyoming white and over there is the snowflake clown. This guy, this Wyoming white, he's a jerk, okay? My hands cannot enter this tank into his domain without him attacking me. Watch, watch. Okay, I have him. Come on, dude. Look at this. Ow! You <laughs> see, that's what I'm telling you about. Look at this. Look how aggressive he is. Like, look at this. He just, he's, okay, okay that's enough. I don't know why. Look, 
I'm not doing this for views, and I'm definitely not doing it for you guys, okay? I don't even know who I'm doing this for. The point is, is that, okay, here, here's my hypothesis. I think he believes he is the master of this tank. He is the alpha male, the alpha dog, um, you know, that stupid uh, bounty hunter show. He's the dog. Because of that, he thinks anything entering his domain is fair game. Well, guess what? We're gonna be adding some fish to this tank over the coming months, including some dwarf angels, some wrasses, and at the end, some tanks, and maybe even a trigger. It depends on the uh, total stock of this tank. He's gonna get bullied. And I'm excited for that, okay? I usually don't say that about fish, but when I come home, I'm the food giver. I am God to this tank. I am, I am his creator almost, basically. I've created this wonderful world. He's gonna find uh, internal punishment. All right, guys, that's about it today. I'm really excited to finally show off and give some kind of commentary to the 250 gallon saltwater tank. Now, my hope um, this Sunday is to show you guys an unboxing video that's been in the backlog, okay? I love doing unboxings. I know you guys like watching unboxings, so I'm gonna try to finish that up, I promise. That being said, my name is Aaron. This is Aaron's Aquatics. See you guys next time.